The Grape Nuts Flakes program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. breakfast chiseler is? Well, he's a fellow who cuts corners on his morning meal and so cheats himself out of the right kind of a start for a good day's work. Now, whether it's because you're in a hurry or because you want to eat lightly, the right answer to a quick, light, but all-around nourishing breakfast dish is grape nut flakes. They're always ready for breakfast before you are. And moldy, rich, toasty brown grape nut flakes make such an appetizing dish, you'll enjoy them right down to the last crisp flake. Then Grape Nuts Flakes have a stay-with-you quality, and they're a whole-grain cereal full of all-around whole-grain nourishment. So for a grand-to-eat breakfast treat, order delicious Grape Nuts Flakes at home or at your favorite restaurant. Magic played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a man who sold more carnations in the Easter parade this morning than any other vendor in the Los Angeles area, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny, the florist, talking. And Don, you're a little wrong there. I wasn't selling carnations in the Easter parade. I was giving them away. Giving them away? Yes, every fellow that bought a gardenia for his girl got a free carnation for himself. <laughs> you see, Don, I planted 10,000 carnations in my backyard to aid the, vo the war effort. Well, for heaven's sakes, Jack, how can carnations aid the war effort? Well, my fortune teller told me I could make rubber out of them. I boiled them and boiled them, but they still don't bounce. <laughs> However, that's the first time Princess Korsakoff has ever failed me. <laughs> Princess Korsakoff? Why, I never heard of that fortune teller. Is she expensive? What'd you say, Don? I say, uh, I never heard of Princess Korsakoff as a fortune teller. Is she expensive? Uh, well, Don, a private reading is a dollar. But if you order the 75-cent lunch and don't have dessert, it's free. <laughs> it's a choice of deep dish apple pie or your future. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Firestone. All right, so I thought I could make rubber. Anyway, Mary, as I was telling Don, that's the first time Princess Korsakoff has failed me. Oh, that dame's full of baloney. She is, eh? <laughs> Remember the time she said you were going to be the President of the United States? Never mind. <laughs> you went out and had cards printed. Jack Benny, you voted for me. Quit beefing. <laughs> Don't laugh. Don't laugh, Mary. I may still be President. Well, you ought to tell Roosevelt he might want to look around. <laughs> Keep it up, Mary. Keep that up and you won't be Secretary of Labor. Oh, you promised that to every girl in Hollywood. Well, you're off the list, young lady. And you can also tell that father of yours that the FBI can get along without him. 
<laughs> That's a dirty trick. He sold bluing house to house to get a G-man badge and everything. Too bad. Hello, Phil. Oh, how are you, Phil? Say, hey, that's a beautiful carnation you have in your buttonhole. Where'd you get it? I bought a gardenia for Alice on the boulevard this morning, and the sweetest little old lady with a shawl over her head gave me this carnation for nothing. <laughs> Well, I, uh, <laughs> I have a surprise for you, Phil. That little old lady was me. That makeup kind of fooled you, didn't it? Incrumable. <laughs> well, it fooled, it fooled Herbert Marshall, too. When I gave him his change, he pressed it back in my hand and said, bless you. <laughs> Gosh, it made tears come to my eyes. Huh? Well, he didn't fool Jack Oakey. He lifted your skirt and rolled your pants down. <laughs> He's just a smart aleck, that's all. Say, hey, Mr. Benny, what do you think of my new Easter? Oh, hello. Hello, Dennis. Hello. Well, kid, did you have a nice Easter? Yeah, my mother gave me a basket with two chocolate rabbits in it. Two chocolate rabbits? Pretty soon well... I'll have hundreds of them, won't I? <laughs> No use waiting. I got to have a talk with that kid. <laughs> Say, Dennis, that's a, that's a nice suit you're wearing. Is that your new Easter outfit? Yeah, do you like it? Oh, it's swell. But what's that big lump in the back? My tailor. He's still, still working, working on it. Still working on it. it. <laughs> that's been on every program in the last three months. Huh? Well, Dennis, if, you're, if you tell your tailor to get out, you can do your song now. Okay. Hold it a minute, kid. Say, Jackson, what's this I hear about Rochester's horse running in the Kentucky Derby next Saturday? Is that a fact? Yes, Phil, but I'd rather not talk about it. Sing, Dennis. Well, imagine Rochester having a horse in the Kentucky Derby. Well, it's really that old nag that used to pull my buggy around. I sold it to Rochester for four dollars. Four dollars? Yes. You sold Rochester a horse for four bucks that's good enough to run in the Kentucky Derby? I thought he was going to have a barbecue. I never dreamed he'd put a jockey on it. <laughs> Anyway, that same horse under the name of Burnt Cork is running for over $50,000 in the Derby Saturday. But I made a mistake. I don't mind. You don't mind? Then why did you try to drown yourself in your pool yesterday? <laughs> I wasn't trying to drown myself. Do you always go in swimming with a manhole cover around your neck? <laughs> That was my dog tag from the last war. And you... <laughs> oh, well, I sold a thoroughbred for $4. It's my loss, so let's forget it. That's all. But, Jack, uh, what about your fortune teller, Princess Korsakoff? Didn't she see racehorse in your tea leaves? No, just rubber and president. <laughs> you better snap out of it or I'll start eating somewhere else. Go ahead and sing, Dennis. Hold it, kid. That's probably Rochester. He's been hinting around all week about going to the Kentucky Derby. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. Rochester, if you're calling about getting time off to go to the Kentucky Derby, the answer is no. Oh, I forgot all about the Derby. That was just a silly whim of mine. Good. But I was wondering, boss, my sister Bedelia is getting married, and if it's all right with you, I'd like to attend the ceremony. Getting married, eh? Where does your sister live? Louisville. <laughs> I thought so. Now, Rochester, don't pull that stuff. Your sister Bedelia lives in Chicago. That's my sister Bedelia. This one's Bedelia. <laughs> oh, Bedelia and Bedelia. Isn't that unusual? Two sisters having names that are so much alike? Oh, that's nothing. I got a brother named Rochester. <laughs> Rochester, Rochester, Bedulia, Bedelia, you're not going to the Derby. That's Derby, boss. <laughs> I don't care what it is. Now, look, Rochester, just because our horse is running in the Derby, that doesn't mean... Our that you... horse? Yes. I talked to my lawyer, and he says that legally, half of that horse belongs to me. Well, unless he backs over the finish line, my half is going to win. <laughs> Rochester, regardless of the outcome, you're not going to Louisville. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, I'll try something else, Rochester. Get your brother out of my house. <laughs> Sing, Dennis. I got to call my lawyer. I wonder if I really do own half of that horse. I don't know. <laughs> Not a highway strewn with flowers. 
sung by Dennis Day. April Showers. That's really a beautiful song. It's pretty old, too, isn't it, Mr. Benny? Yes, it is. Gosh, I remember when Al Jolson first introduced that song back in 1922. My father took me to the theater. Just a minute, Junior. In 1922, you were just as old as Al Jolson. What? My father took me to the theater. Don't give me that kid stuff. What do you mean, kid stuff? My father happened to be in New York, I was broke, and he took me to the theater. <laughs> That's all I said. Say. <laughs> and another thing, young lady, don't ever say that I'm as old as Al Jolson. Go on, he even looks younger than you do. Well, naturally, he takes it easy. He works on his knees. I have to stand up to make a <laughs> Jolson. Anyway, let's let's forget about me for a while. Now, where were we? Oh, Jack, don't forget the play I wrote. Oh, yes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have a special treat for all of you. Mr. Don Wilson, that eminent American playwright, has written another of his famous one-act dramas entitled Love's Young Dream. Take it, Mr. Wilson. The time is spring. The scene is a honeymoon cottage covered with ivy. It's the new home of Mr. and Mrs. Oliver J. Snodgrass, who have just eloped and been married. As we pick them up, the happy couple are just arriving at their little love nest for the first time. Curtain. Music. Well, here we are, darling. 33 Maple Street, our own little home. Oh, it's beautiful, sweetheart. We'll be so happy here. Yeah. Yeah. Gee, just think. Twenty minutes ago, your name was Myrtle Moonfinkel. <laughs> and now, and now... I'm a snot in the grass. A snot grass. See, our own little home. Well, let's go inside, honey. You go first, Myrtle. You go first, Oliver. <laughs> no. no, I don't want to. You go first. No, you go first. Three hours later. <laughs> no, honey, you go. <laughs> oh, let's go in together. All right. <laughs> Myrtle, stop! <laughs> Gee, Myrtle, isn't a romantic eloping? 
Nobody knows we're married except us. <laughs> Gosh, we're all alone. Oh, Oliver, I love you so much. And I love you too, darling. What's that? Phil's guitar player just fell off the stool. <laughs> Get up, Frankie. Now, where were we? Oh, yes. And I love you too, darling. I'm sorry about that, Jackson. Shut up, I'm acting. <laughs> And I love you too, darling Nice bit of acting <laughs> But what will your mother say When she finds out we're married? I don't care what she says You're mine, Moon Myrtle Finkel And nothing <laughs> You're mine, Myrtle Moon Finkel And nothing can part us. Come, darling, I'll show you all the rooms in the house. Oh, Oliver. <laughs> Myrtle, stop acting like a darn fool. <laughs> but, Oliver, I'm worried about your mother. Please call her and tell her we're married. All right, darling. If it'll make you any happier, I will. Long distance, please. I want Mrs. Rosie Snodgrass in San Luis Obispo. Hurry, darling. Oh, Myrtle, you made me the happiest man in the world. And we'll never be <laughs> separated, will we? Never. Hello? Hello, Ma, this is Oliver. I got a surprise for you, Ma. What's that? No, no, I can't have breakfast with you tomorrow morning. I'm in Los Angeles. But, gee, I'd have to leave here right away. Look, Ma, I have a surprise for you. I... You're having what? Tell her about us, Oliver. I will, I will. You're having what for breakfast? You are? Oh, boy, I'll be right home. <laughs> Goodbye, Myrtle. I'll see you tomorrow morning. But, Oliver, we were just married. I can't help it. Mother's having grape nuts flakes for breakfast. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> So you see, ladies, the moral of this story is never start your honeymoon without grape nuts flakes. What happened to Myrtle Moonfinkel may happen to you or you or you. So always insist on toasty brown sweet as a nut grape nuts flakes, America's fastest growing flake cereal. I thank you. Don, that was one of the finest plays you've ever written, and I thought that my performance as the husband was... Now, who can that be? Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. Oh, you again. What do you want? I just got a telegram from my uncle in Rockdale. Uh-huh. He's very ill, and he wants me to come over there right away and give him a transfusion. <laughs> oh, your uncle's sick, eh? That's too bad. Yeah. By the way, where is Rockdale? About eight miles out of Louisville. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Well, Rochester, you seem to have a very heavy concentration of relatives in that area. And besides, what makes you think you can fool me? I got the horse from you, didn't I? <laughs> I don't care what you got. Now, look, Rochester, you're not going to the Kentucky Derby. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? How about... Oh, this one's too fantastic. I'll work on it and call you back. <laughs> don't bother. Imagine me selling that nice, that racehorse for four bucks. Oh, well. Play, Phil.
That was either Easter Parade or White Christmas, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Which song was it, Phil? What's the difference? They were both written by Irving Berlin. That's not the point. I'd like to know. I have to announce the name of the song. Well, if you've got to do it, why don't you do it in double talk? You know, start it off something like this. See, that was Thomas Freeman's train with the Thomas Freeman's played with a solid four. <laughs> no fiddle. Now, Phil, look, Phil, no, stop the kidding. This is important. Was that number White Christmas or Easter Parade? Well, the majority rules. Why don't you take a vote? That's an idea. I'll take a vote. Now, will all you boys who were playing White Christmas please raise your hand? How many hands? How many hands, Mary? Eight. Eight. Now, will all you boys who were playing Easter Parade please raise your hand? How many hands, Mary? Eleven. Eleven. That was Easter Parade, <laughs> played by Phil Harris and his orchestra, thus ending tonight's great mystery. <laughs> And now, <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, hmm, I'm kidding, and imagine me selling that racehorse for $4. Uh, oh, well, he can't win. That's one consolation. Now, now, ladies what and What do you mean he can't win? I got a hunch that burnt cork is going to come through. What do you say? We all chip in five bucks a piece and make a bet. Say, that's a good idea. Here's my five, Phil. Here's my five. Here's mine, Mr. Harris. Hmm. And now, ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> How about you, Reckless? Aren't you going to take a chance for five bucks? I'd love to, Mary, but I left my money in my other shoes. <laughs> anyway, I don't believe in gambling when there are minors present. But, Mr. Benny, I'm over 21. I mean coal miners. <laughs> a lot of Phil's boys come from Scranton, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Anyway, I'm not betting. Well, I'll tell you what, Jackson. I'm going to put $5 on that horse's nose just for you. Well. And if that horse comes in, the minute I get paid off, I'm coming over to your house with the money right in my hand. Well. And if you reach for it, I'm going to break your arm. <laughs> I knew there was a catch to that. How about you, Dennis? Would you like to bet $5 for your Uncle Jack? You're always my uncle when money comes up. <laughs> well, I just thought it'd be nice if... Oh, forget it, kid. Forget it. That looks all right on paper, but will it work? <laughs> Look, fella, I'm not throwing away any five bucks, and that's final. But Jack... Let him alone, Don. Let him alone. If Jackson wants to save his dough, that's all right with me. After all, he's leaving it all to my kid. No, you got that wrong, Phil. Your baby is a girl. My money goes to the first member of my cast who has a boy and names it after me. Does that go for me, too, Mr. Benny? Of course, Dennis. Gosh, I gotta find a girl, fall in love with her, marry her, have a baby, and it's gotta be a boy. I worry about things like that. <laughs> well, stop worrying. And now, ladies and gentlemen, say, I wonder if Rochester's horse has got a chance. Well, it's not a sure thing, but who knows about horse races? Yeah, who knows? Give me that phone, Mary. Here you are. Thanks. Who are you calling, Jack? Princess Corsica. <laughs> I never make a move without her. Hello? Hello, Boyle Heights, Gypsy Tea Room. Boyle speaking. <laughs> I... I like... I'd like to speak to Princess Korsakoff, please. The princess? Yeah. She's out in the kitchen washing dishes. <laughs> I tell her to wipe her hands and come to the phone. This is important. Okay, Firestone. <laughs> hello, hello, princess. Oh, she isn't there yet. I wouldn't mind making a bet. Hello, Princess Korsakoff. Who's calling, please? <laughs> Don't tell me I'll see it in the crystal. And never mind, Princess. This is Benny. Who? Benny. Jack Benny. Oh, the president. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now, Princess, I'm calling you about the Kentucky Derby. On you, it wouldn't look good. <laughs> No, no, it's a horse race, the Kentucky Derby. Now, Princess, it's very important that I know which horse is going to win. Wait, I'll look in my crystal bowl. Okay, look. 
I see a big crowd of people. Yes? They're frantic. They're excited. They're cheering. Yes, yes. Alabama's kicking off. That's the Rose Bowl game. <laughs> that was three years ago. <laughs> Look again, Princess. Mm. I see people watching a horse race. That's it. That's it. That's the Derby. Now tell me, Princess, what's the name of the winning horse? It's Burnt Cook. And he's coming in backwards. Then my half is winning. <laughs> Thank you, Princess. I'll be in for lunch tomorrow. Any advice? Yeah. Don't order the meatloaf. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> well, fellas, it's all set. Burn Cork is going to win the Derby. Then give me five bucks, Jackson, and you're in with it. Nothing doing. I'm going to bet $50, and I'm sending Rochester to Louisville. You get better odds at the track. I'll call him right now. Yes, sir. But, Mr. Benny, I thought you didn't gamble. Shut up. Besides, <laughs> I know who's going to win. Is that gambling? Anyway, Dennis. Hello? Benny's rubber plantation. Keep them bouncing. <laughs> <laughs> Rochester, this is Mr. Benny. I got good news for you. You can go to Louisville. I can? Yes, and I want you to take $50 out of my money and bet it on burnt cork to win. $50? By the way, where are you keeping your money this week? As if you didn't know No, I've looked all over Now listen, Rochester Listen carefully You know the big candelabra we've got on the dining room table? Uh-huh Well, melt the third candle from the left And you'll find a key Uh-huh Then take the key, go into the kitchen And unlock the cupboard Uh-huh There's a big jar there on the second shelf That says peanut butter Dig down in the peanut butter Take out $50 Rinse it off And bet it on your horse and remember, bet it to win, not to place, not the show. Bet 50 bucks on first horse to win. Well, is being penny wise and point foolish when you shop these days. But you can be penny wise and point wise too if you ask your grocer for grape nuts flakes in the big 12 ounce economy size package. Now, here's why one, you don't part with a single precious ration stamp when you buy. Two, Crisp, toasty brown grape nuts flakes are a real breakfast treat. Three, they're a whole grain cereal, one type of food in the basic seven, recommended in Uncle Sam's nutrition program. So you get grand nourishment for your money. Four, if you always buy grape nuts flakes in the large economy size instead of the smaller size, you save up to 14 cents on every dollar spent. Not only that, but the large size package brings you up to 16 servings of Grape Nuts Flakes for only about a penny a serving. So penny or point-wise, it's wiser to ask for the big package of Grape Nuts Flakes. That was the last number of the 30th program of the new Grape Nuts Flakes series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. And just think, Mary, by this time next Sunday, I'll know whether Rochester's horse has won or not. Yeah, you'll either be swimming with a manhole cover around your neck or rolling on the dance floor at Ciro's. Yeah, the suspense is awful. Good night, folks. <laughs> the Jack Benny program is written by Bill Marlowe and Ed Belong. <laughs> <laughs>